Hello friends, welcome to Inside Text. This is a platform to learn about power transmission elements and its control system. So friends, continuing in the tap changer in transformer series for onload tap changes. Today we are going to learn about the control circuit wiring and how the operation occurs for the control circuit wiring. So let's get started. Friends, uh, we have many different kinds of videos about transformer testing, panel to breaker schedule, different kinds of wiring of all the equipments, also about battery maintenance and the latest videos about the OLTC in the transformer. Do check it out on our YouTube channel. Links for all the videos uh, are in the description box given below. So now continuing in today's video about the onload tap changes and we are going to learn about the control circuit wiring. So we already know that OLTC in the transformer is situated over here. So this is the mechanism box and on the back side the OLTC is completely uh, submerged into the oil tank. Okay, so this is the mechanism box from the outside. This is the motor, the main mechanism part which moves the OLTC and uh, based on the operation of this motor, the tapping in the transformers will be changed. And this is the entire mechanism that is helping for changing of the tap positions. This is the RTCC panel that is uh, situated in the control room. So remotely also using this panel, we can change the tapping positions in the transformers. So in the previous video, we have already seen the connections between this OLTC DM box, RTCC panel mechanism, how this motor is rotating. Okay, so today we are going to learn in more detail about the control circuit wiring of this DM box and how its connection is done with the RTCC panel. So in the previous video, we have already seen that we this is the power circuit and how this power circuit is helping this motor to rotate. Okay, so this is the main CSS switch. Okay, and then uh, how the power is transformed and do this motor operates. Okay, so, so looking in further detail about the control wiring, DM box wiring and RTCC wiring. How these two are connected, this is the control circuit that is explaining the connection between these two box. So over here in the circuit diagram, you can see this kind of terminals are indicating the terminals for RTCC panel. And this kind of complete dot is indicating the circuit is for the terminals of OLTC DM box. Now if you differentiate in this circuit, these two highlighted parts are the circuit of the OLTC DM box. And the remaining part is the circuit inside the RTCC panel. Okay, and uh, in the lower part, the maximum circuit is of the RTC of the RTCC panel, except this highlighted part you can see in the TM box. Right. So now let's understand how this pan how this entire circuit works. We will start with the power supply from the CSS switch. This CSS switch is over here. So once you turn on this CSS switch, the power moves further and goes to the transformer. The transformer is connected between the R and Y phase. Okay. So this is the transformer. And once it is energized, okay, its LV side will be going to the circuit over here and it is coming to the CMCB switch. The CMCB switch is also situated over here. Once we turn on the CMCB switch, now the power is moving towards the RTCC panel. Inside the RTCC panel, you will see as the power moves further, this AC1 contact is closed and this lamp L2 will be glowing. L2 indicating that the supply of the OLTC is switched off. How to turn on the supply for OLTC in the RTCC panel? You can see over this AC1. AC1 is a contactor that is placed inside on the back side of the RTCC panel. Okay, over here this contactor. What is the working of this contactor is it will check if the power supply for the RTCC panel for OLTC is okay or not. If the power supply is okay, okay and how to turn on the power supply for that there is a provision of this css3 switch now this css3 switch is located on the rtcc panel itself once it is turned on and power supply is reaching thoroughly to the 
RTCC panel, what will happen is this AC1 contactor will be operated. Now if we turn, this switch is turned on, right, now the power is moving to this AC1 contactor. This AC1 contactor gets energized, this gets energized and because of that, this contact will be now closed. Once this contact is closed, that means this will be open, right, and L2 will be stopped glowing. Instead, what will be glowing now? L1 LED and that indicates that OLTC supply is on. So this is the working of AC1 contactor and now the power moves on further over here. Okay, now we have reached the power supply has reached to the DM box. Inside the DM box you can see 55 volts here, 55 volts on the other side. Now there are two contactors coming in picture MRCR, MRCL. These are the two main contacts which we were talking about that are responsible for the working of this motor. Now how this gets energized, let's discuss that. The power has now reached over here and if we are running in the local mode, okay, you, we have this CSS switch over here that indicates remote and local inside this mechanism DX, DM box itself, okay. So if we, if the choice is done for the local okay then the power moves this way and if the connection is for the remote okay then the power will be moving over here in both these cases the power is moving to a switch that is the selection for sequence sequence selector switch now it indicates either independent master or follower so we are choosing the independent mode for now Okay, and now the power is moving further to this context. And in this case also, the power will be moving forward to LCS switch. Okay, now uh, over here, if we are doing the operation in remote mode through the RTCC panel, we are having two push buttons. So, these push buttons are placed on the RTCC panel indicating raise and lower. So, if you want to raise, you have to push this green button. And if you want to lower the tap position, we have to push the red button. And similarly, if we are talking about the DM box, so in DM box also we have raise or lower switch. This is the LCS switch. So uh, let us assume we want to uh, raise the tap position and we are pushing the RPB that is uh, push button for raise or we are selecting raise from the local switch itself. In both the cases, the power will be moving forward and it is going to MRCR contact over here and SR contact over here. SR is the SR over here is the stepping relay. Now, if this is energized, in that case only the contacts will operate. So we have moved to SR and the power has moved forward to this RLS switch. From there, this RLS is the limit switch. From there, the power is going to MRCL. But the MRCL and after that contact, we have MRCR that is contacted will be energized. Once it is energized, its contact over here is closed. Its contact over here is closed. In the power circuit, it will be closed. And hence, the motor will now start rotating so this is the entire circuit that will operate when the raise push button is selected or even if you select the raise from local switch the same circuit will operate and the motor will start rotating now, how the motor will stop rotating? For that, there is a special provision of DSS switch that is situated over here. And the, now we will understand the working of this DSS switch. And then you will understand how the cutoff is provided to this motor when the tap position has changed. Okay. Below this DSS switch, 
there is this special kind of plunger which will be rotating with its different position okay this shaft will be rotating with its different position and because of that because of this dss switch once the tap position has changed this motor will stop rotating let's understand this operation of the dss switch so you can see how this arrangement is done over here so for example we will see the dss switch in inside has three contacts okay at three places the contacts are provided from this dss switch from the operation of this dss switch this contacts will be operated now how this dss switch moves is like this okay so this is how the dss switch contacts will be operated so you can see when it is moving this contacts are getting close towards the raised side once again we will see it see when it is moved the raised contacts are getting closed okay and once it comes back to the position this contacts will be open now at which position this raised contacts are closed we will see it again so at this position you can see now the all the three contacts will be closed towards the raised position so this is the first contact that will be closed when this position is achieved and when the contact is closed the power moves further towards the hooter circuit the hooter is placed on the rtcc panel on the outside and this will continuously indicate that the process of raising the tap position is in progress after that the second contact getting closed is this one again once it is closed the power moves forward to the sr contactor it is energized once it is energized what happens the contact which was nc now becomes no if this becomes no that means this has to open okay but it will not open why because one more contact of this dss is getting closed once it is getting closed power moves from this towards mrcl once the power is moving towards mrcl what happens now is so this is how the entire racing operation will continue to work but now what happens once the dss comes back to its this normal position okay and uh, all the contacts will be open for the dss then this mrcr will get deenergized once it gets deenergized this contacts will be open and this motor will stop rotating so this is how the race operation occurs and this dss switch plays the major role and crucial role for operation of the ortc uh, in the similar way if we want to lower the tap position okay so if we want to lower the tap position in that case this circuit will be energized for the lowering okay and uh, that is how uh, similarly the tap positions will be changed to lower tap position so in this video we have seen the wiring between the oltc dm box the mechanism of dm box how it operates how the dss switch plays the very crucial role and how it is connected to the rtcc panel through the rtcc panel how raising and lower of the oltc tap positions can also be done so we hope that in today's video you have learned the entire control circuit wiring and understood how the operation occurs so in the next video we are going to learn about the master and follower circuit wiring for the oltc uh, and keep watching our videos ask your queries in the comments below thank you